Hello, my name is Megan and I'm an undergraduate studying English and business. Today I'm going to walk you through my ePortfolio so that you can see why they are beneficial and hopefully get a few ideas for your own. This is my homepage. As you can see, it provides a brief introduction into who I am. It is important to consider your audience from the beginning. My audience is future employers, so I worded my introduction to highlight aspects of myself that would be interesting to those employers. I also provide a thesis statement, which you can see here. That gives the reader an idea of what is to come. I decided to link pages of my ePortfolio to this statement in case there is a certain aspect of my ePortfolio that employers are interested in. Now we can move on to my About Me page. This page can contain any sort of biographical information as well as a brief background of education or work experience. This is a page that you want to show your personality while keeping it professional. You will notice that I chose to provide a link to my resume on this page. If we click that link, my resume will open in a PDF format. It's always useful to link your resume so that future employers will have access to your official resume. You also notice that I have a slideshow of pictures on this page. I chose to use a variety of pictures to show my diverse interests. Your About Me page is a great place to include your interests or hobbies to give a fuller picture of who you are. The structure of your ePortfolio is completely up to you. I have set mine up with three headers, Collaborate, Educate, and Articulate. Under these headers, I have a few pages that describe my experiences with each of these terms. Now we can move to the Collaborate page. You will see that I have a brief description and links to two separate pages. This is an opportunity for you to showcase your experience with a variety of artifacts. For example, on this page, I have pictures that highlight the experience that I described to the right. You will also see that I have hyperlinked the work to the paragraphs. These links will open to PDF pages. You can also link websites that have content related to your topic. Now we can move on to the Educate header. Within this header, I have my summer camp counselor position. It is important to note that sometimes the experience you have isn't directly related to the field that you are pursuing. I used reflective writing to connect these experiences to my future goals. You can relate volunteer work, class projects, labs, or work experience by pulling out the values learned and relating them to your audience. My last header is the Articulate page. I created this page to highlight my public speaking experience. Unfortunately, I did not record any of the presentations, but if I had, this would be a great place to link them. However, I did have a few articles that mentioned my presentation. I chose to link those to my page to give my audience sources to pull from. Again, when you click on the link, it goes to a website. As you can see, the structure, tone, and goal of your ePortfolio can vary depending on your audience. I hope that you found this helpful and that you can walk away with some ideas to use on your own ePortfolio. If you want to see other examples, you can go to the ePortfolio examples page, which is on the ePortfolio project tab. This page has a variety of examples from various majors and undergraduate and graduate students. If you have any questions, our website has a variety of resources to help you get started. Good luck.